So next up on the gods and goddesses of Mesopotamia, let's talk about Easter, or Inanna, or Ishtar, depending on how you want to pronounce it, or which name from which region you want to use. So for the sake of easy talking in this video, I am going to be referring to her as Ishtar, just because it's kind of easier, rolls off the tongue, right? So Ishtar, in the sacred sacred number system, her number is 15. Her association is with the planet Venus, and she's represented, her symbols are the eight-pointed star and the lion. You know, one of the interesting things in the Simon Necronomicon, it says that the Magan text is sacred to Ishtar. Now, here's one of the interesting things of why. So, if I can remember the number right, because I think it might be in there, or it might be in my hardcover, but if you count up the number of lines in the Magan text, I believe that it comes up to 753 lines. So if you add 7, 5, and 3, you get 15. Interesting, huh? So, Ishtar, let's talk about her in, for a bit. Got my notes, and let's go. So I already talked about her symbolism. So Ishtar is her Akkadian name. Inanna is the Sumerian name. And they basically they um they were they were seen as like this as different deities, but they kind of became the same over time, right? Either that or they just had the same name for a different for the they had a different name for the same deity, you know, depending on where you were living, basically. So Ishtar is associated with war, sexual love, rain, thunderstorms, wheat, grain, vegetation, fertility, political power. And, um, okay, so her consort was Dumuzi, who was a god of shepherds, um, and there was also this other, um, divine being, Ninshubur, who, uh, I did read in one place that she was considered a goddess, was her personal attendant. And it wasn't just kind of like Ninshubur was her butler, let's say, they mutually supported each other, but they were just basically like a team, right? The most famous tale of Ishtar is, you know, Ishtar's descent into the underworld where she goes through seven gates and relinquishes all of her armor, meets Ereshkigal down in the underworld, confronts her, gets killed, and rises up three days later. Um, thanks to Enki sending two elementals with the food of life and water of life to bring her back to life, and then on her way out, she is accompanied by some of the beings from the underworld. And they're like, yo, you made a space down there. And the rule is that when you go, or when once you enter, you can't leave. But you're like divine. So it, since you left, we have to have somebody take your place. So who's it going to be? Is it going to be your brother? No. Is it going to be your sister? No. Is it going to be your husband? And she goes, yeah, take him. Well, gee, that's nice, right? And she fixes upon him the Eye of Death. And they take Dumuzi down into the underworld. And Dumuzi's sister, Geshtinana, becomes so sad about it that she petitions and offers to take his place for half of the year. And that's where you get the cycle of the seasons. So it wasn't really, at, you know, back then, that's, what, that's how they explained the seasons. And this tale got translated, basically, into the whole Demeter and Persephone with Hades and all that. So, that's where it came from. But, anyway, by the way, a really, really cool book is um, Ishtar, Queen of Heaven and Earth by Sam, uh, I think it's Samuel Noah Kramer, or Noah Samuel Kramer. Um, K-R-A-M-E-R. -E I did check it out years ago from my college's library. Really, really fascinating read. I actually used it for a lot of research in my Lamadu Dean Gear manuscript when I was basically dissecting and adding to the whole Simon Necronomicon. <coughs> anyway, we'll continue. Like I said, she's called the Queen of Heaven, or the Queen of Heaven and Earth. She, at one point, did take the Tablets of Destiny, and the Tablets of Destiny, which I should make a video on eventually, is basically like, you know, it's kind of like Infinity Stones in a way. If you hold the Tablets of Destiny, you hold the fate of the universe. You control everything that happens, right? Or you can. Kind of like the Triforce, too, if you think about it, if you're a Zelda fan. So, yeah, she took him from, from Anki. I think that was the tale of, like, Anki and the Anzu bird. Something like that. Um, fact check me on that if you guys want to. So, Ish 
like Ishtar was um, worshipped in Uruk at the Temple of Ayana, which means the House of Heaven. Depending on the tradition, her parentage is either from Anu, Nana and Ningal, or Enki and some mystery woman that he slept with. Because Enki's kind of like Zeus. He goes around and, and fornicates with a lot of other deities. Right? So he needs to take, get control of himself. No offense, bro. Um, so her siblings, depending on the tradition, Arash Kigal is her older sister, Shamash is her twin brother, and Ishgur, also known as Hadad, is her brother, and Teshub is her brother. Um, traditions of her worship included homosexual and transvestite priests, I think they're called Gala, um, and also sacred prostitution. And the Assyrians considered her at the very top of their religious pantheon. She was like eventually moved up to the top and worshipped as the greatest. Uh, she appears in more myths than any other Mesopotamian deity, which really demonstrates her importance and how venerated she really was. She um, also held the Sumerian May which is the divine laws of which are kind of broken, so I think we only know of a third of what they actually are. And I have a video on the Sumerian May that you guys can find in my, in, on my channel. I think it's in my Simon Necronomicon playlist. And by May, I'm pronouncing it the way Mesopotamians did, and it's actually spelled M-E. Anyway. Um, yeah. I already mentioned that, so let me turn the page here. Um, so... She was also seen as the enforcer of divine justice, and that's kind of interesting because um, if you go with the tale that her and Shamash are twins, right? Shamash, it was a big guy on justice, on divine justice. So it's kind of no wonder that she's also associated with it, given the fact that she's supposedly his, tw his twin sister, right? In the Epic of Gilgamesh, which I really should read again, um, Ishtar asked Gilgamesh to be her consort. Interesting. Ishtar and Inanna were at one point separate deities, but equated with each other during the reign of Sargon of Akkad. So when, when Sargon of Akkad basically took over a good portion of the area, he's like, you know, merging um, Ishtar and Inanna. And once again, I think in my other video, I did mention about how when one group conquers another, they either mer like merge deities or certain deities take over qualities of other ones. It's all cultural stuff, really. Um... Yeah, she absorbed the, t the traits of other deities, too, as she rose in popularity, such as uh, she took um, Aya, who was Shamash's wife. She took Aya's qualities. Um, Anatu, a Semitic warrior goddess, and Irnini, a goddess of cedar forests in the Lebanese mountains. She also took the traits of Kilili, which I wasn't able to find too, like information on what, what her traits were, and Sahirtu, who brings rain. Also, Sarbanda, which is the personification of sovereignty, which I thought was really cool. Um, Kings of Uruk would roleplay as her consort, Dumuzi, during the New Year's festival on the 10th day of Akitu, which is the month that goes with Ares, um, which is, you know, the spring equinox, right? And um, the king would engage in sex with the high priestess. And um, also, switching gears a little bit, in one myth, the warrior god Shara is her son, and and Ishtar is also depicted as the mother of Lulal, a deity invoked in protection amulets and used and invoked by Asipus or exorcists. You know, Asipu is basically the Mesopotamian word for exorcist. So you can see that Ishtar is a very, very diverse, um, very interesting, very complicated entity. And in the Simon Necronomicon, you know, there's a there's a purification prayer. That, um, that's done that's done asking for her blessing that you can do um you know with like ceremonial oils or in a bathtub and um i think that's in the book of calling correct me if i'm wrong on that one but i'm pretty sure and the magan text has the descent of ishtar in it and the gate walking really mirrors you know as above so below that kind of thing it mirrors ishtar's descent and we ourselves during the gatewalking descend into Ganzir following in her footsteps and we ceremonially you could call it like I don't like to say ego death because that really as a psych major irks me right it's more of an id death but I think one day I'll make a rant on that you know let me know in the comments if you want it if you want me to explain that more um but we follow in Ishtar's footsteps the Magan text is sacred to her 
even the colors that we wear. Males should wear black robes during during the rites. Females should wear white robes during the during the rites because white is her color. She's associated with white, and um, yeah. So that's as much of the information for this video as able as I was able to gather, given my energy level and the time that I had to research. While I'm still trying to get videos out here, I just went over 10 minutes, so that's that seems pretty good. If you guys know any other further information about Ishtar, feel free to email me or drop it in the comments. You can you know put the comments down below. I think you can find my email in the description or during the end of this video with all of my other social links and stuff. So let me know what you think about this video and questions, comments, complaints, concerns, issues, feel free to contact me and good hunting. Thanks for watching my video. So if you want to check out my playlists, I have, among others, the Simon Necronomicon, the Tree of Life, General Magic, Tulpamancy, a playlist on my books, the elements, stones, the theories that govern magic, and the gods and goddesses of Mesopotamia. If you want to check out my books on Amazon, I have Creating Consciousness, Magical Mechanics, Magical Theater, Handy Sigil Magic, and The Guide to the Spheres and Beyond. You can also find me on Facebook at MagicologyYT. You can email me at priestofthenecro at gmail.com, and you can even check out my Instagram, which is Magicology. And good hunting.